Did you know? There were over 100 games planned to release on the GameCube that were cancelled before seeing the light of day. Ever wondered what they were or why they were cancelled? In this video, we'll be covering all of them, with a few exceptions. Certain games will be left out, such as games that were rumored to exist but have no solid evidence backing them, such as Croc 3, and games that were announced for GameCube but released on rival platforms or next-gen platforms, such as Crash Twin Sanity or Super Paper Mario. Since we're talking GameCube, we'll start with a few of Nintendo's own scrapped projects. Kirby Tilt and Tumble 2 was first revealed at Space World 2001. It used a Game Boy Advance as a controller, with a special motion-sensing cartridge that let players tilt the controller to change Kirby's direction and speed. Outlets reported players could move between the TV and the GBA screen, and that Shigeru Miyamoto said players could write their own programs on the game cartridges, such as creating mini-games for themselves and their friends to play. In 2002, the game was rebranded as Rollerama with Kirby being removed altogether. Rollerama was showcased at E3 2002, but never released. But this wasn't the only Kirby game that ran into trouble, not by a long shot. Over the course of 11 years, there were three separate attempts to make a mainline Kirby game for the GameCube. The first was a 2.5D title with four-player gameplay. A reason for its cancellation wasn't given, though Shigefume Kawase, the producer of Kirby's Return to Dreamland, said the game was when he learned how difficult it is to make a game that is both multiplayer and single player. The second game would have been the Kirby series' first ever 3D platformer. It was cancelled because it hadn't reached the level of quality Nintendo wanted. The third game featured a 2D art style similar to a pop-up book and powered up versions of the copy abilities from previous games. Satoru Iwata, who once headed the studio involved in making these games, commented on the 11 years of development stating, Miyamoto says that video games are something you never really complete. It's hard when a game simply refuses to come together. All three games are collectively referred referred to by fans as Kirby GCN, Kirby Adventure, or Kirby Legend of the Stars. Though various elements from all three of these games found their way into Kirby's Return to Dreamland for the Wii and a few other titles, none of these projects received a true reworking into a new game. Rather, Nintendo considers Kirby's Return to Dreamland the successor to Kirby GCN. Another scrapped title was The Mysterious Marionette. This was an unusual Nintendo game accidentally announced alongside Super Mario Sunshine and the Mario 128 tech demo. Shortly after the erroneous listing was published, it was quietly taken down. Despite having Mario in the title and being listed alongside other Mario titles, Marionette wasn't a Mario game. As Miyamoto later told IGN, the game was about controlling a puppet. It aimed to be simple, but also complicated. Marionette had been in development for both the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube, but never got past its initial stages. Miyamoto later commented there was a possibility the game could resurface on the Wii, but it never appeared. Retro Studios, the team behind Metroid Prime had a series of titles that were cancelled around the time they were first acquired by Nintendo. The game Action Adventure was one of the first projects Retro ever undertook. The game featured three female leads fighting evil in a post-apocalyptic planet set in the near future with a sci-fi setting. Due to the concept, some have speculated aspects of this game were reworked into Metroid Prime. However, this speculation is unfounded. What Action Adventure did do, though, was give Nintendo enough confidence in Retro to let them handle the Metroid franchise. Once the Metroid license was in Retro's hands, the studio terminated the action-adventure project. Thunder Rally Car Battle was a Retro Studios game described by IGN as a mix between Twisted Metal 2 and Mario Kart 64 set in a bleak Mad Max-like world. It was also known as Car Battle and Car Combat while being developed. Another was Retro Studios Football, also known as NFL Retro Football, which, believe it or not, was originally going to be a Mario football game. But Nintendo wanted Retro to make more mature titles, so the project became a realistic sports title before being scrapped entirely. And finally, there was Ravenblade. Retro began work on Ravenblade in late 1999 as a role-playing game for the GameCube. It was first unveiled at E3 2001 with a full trailer. Ravenblade was a third-person action RPG set in an ancient world, featuring an epic quest involving the aforementioned magical weapon, the Ravenblade. In the end, all four of these games were cancelled so Retro could fully focus on Metroid. Metroid was Nintendo's top priority, so it became Retro Studios' top priority as well. Given there were rumors Nintendo was looking to buy out the company, Ravenblade may have also been cancelled as a show of commitment to Nintendo. If so, the gamble paid off, as Nintendo purchased $1 million of Retro Studios stock in 2002, making it the majority holder and officially making Retro Studios one of its subsidiaries. Retro weren't the only studio clamoring to make a game using Nintendo's IP. One pitch that never panned out was a sequel to Diddy Kong Racing. Around April 2004, Climax Studios pitched the 
potential sequel to Nintendo. The game, Diddy Kong Racing Adventures, would have seen Wizpig propose a rematch against Diddy and his friends, with his goal being to pave over a forest. The game would have taken the player through 16 different villages styled after characters from the Donkey Kong Country series. Each village would be controlled by a different villain who must be beaten in a race. Vehicles would have included buggies, quad bikes, planes, hover bikes, and jet skis, some of which could be upgraded to access new areas. But this wasn't the only attempt at a Diddy Kong Racing sequel. Donkey Kong Racing made its only appearance at E3 2001 with a trailer featuring Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, Tiny Kong, Kitty Kong, and Taj the Genie as playable racers. While not in the trailer, Cranky and Lanky Kong were also shown in an internal render for the game. The overworld would have featured jungles, planes, and seas stitched together seamlessly just like Diddy Kong Racing. It also would have had four-player multiplayer, and animals from Donkey Kong Country would stand in for vehicles, each with a unique ability. Players could be knocked from their animal, triggering a button-mashing frenzy to get back onto it. The animal could also be upgraded through collectible fruits. During development of the game, Microsoft bought Rare, so Donkey Kong Racing was renamed Saberman Stampede. The game would star Rare's Saberman character and release on the original Xbox, then the Xbox 360 before being cancelled. This cancellation was due to cameo, elements of power being behind schedule. The Saberman team was relocated and the title was put on hold. In 2008, a video of the 360 prototype was posted on YouTube, showing that Saberman Stampede had evolved from a racer into an adventure game during its ill-fated development. Another popular franchise from Rare is the Conquer series. After Conquer's Bad Fur Day was released in early 2001, the developers started work on a sequel for the GameCube. The game was called Conquer's Other Bad Day and focused on Conquer's unsuccessful tenure as king. The plot saw Conquer spending all the kingdom's money on beer and hookers, with the first level featuring Conquer breaking out of jail for his crimes. The main villain was a massive space poo, the Cthulhu poo, and the game featured many parodies of the era's movies. There was even an evil doppelganger ganger of Conquer. After attempting to sell Rare to Nintendo in the early 2000s, the company was successfully sold to Microsoft in September 2002. Most of Rare's in-development games were moved to the Xbox. Unfortunately for Conquer's other bad day, Microsoft wasn't interested in a Conquer sequel. Instead, Microsoft had Rare remake the first Conquer game with a multiplayer mode, now known as Conquer Live and Reloaded. By the time Rare resumed work on Conquer's other bad day, the Xbox was reaching the end of its life cycle. Microsoft wanted rare to move the game to the upcoming Xbox 360, but to Chris Seaver, the lead developer on the game, this was a bad move. In an interview with Eurogamer, Seaver remembers, I just couldn't face spending another two years on a game we'd already spent a year and a half on, so I guess the cancellation was probably my fault. Rare had also worked on a multiplayer-focused Conquer game titled Gettin' Medieval, which reused some assets from Conquer's Other Bad Day, and would also feature Greg the Grim Reaper as the protagonist. But those weren't the only projects designed by Seaver to get canned. The mixed fantasy MMO Quest allegedly started some time after Perfect Dark released on the Nintendo 64. It initially started being developed for the GameCube, but moved to Xbox after Microsoft's acquisition of Rare. By that time, the setting of Quest had transformed into a sci-fi MMO shooter. Development was slow, and Microsoft wanted Rare to focus more on its high-profile franchises like Perfect Dark and Conquer. Rare was restructured for that purpose, and Quest was put on hold. Then, after Perfect Dark Zero was released, the original fantasy MMO MMO concept of the game came back into development, this time titled Cascade. But Cascade 2 was cancelled. This was due to the team focusing their work on GoldenEye 007 for the Xbox Live Arcade, a game that also never released. Although not developed by Rare, the next game is related to the studio. In 1998, former Rare developer Martin Hollis of GoldenEye and Perfect Dark fame founded his own studio, Zunami. One of their projects was Game Zero, also known as Project Z3796WP a GameCube exclusive developed in collaboration with Nintendo in 2000. Game Zero was never shown publicly, but that didn't stop rumors from spreading as soon as the deal was known. Due to Hollis's history, many assumed Game Zero would be another FPS. However, Hollis wanted to try something new. Game Zero was actually a sandbox platformer with destructible voxel levels. In it, a female protagonist mined an alien planet to craft new items and structures, and rescued characters from tightly packed Mario 64-like levels. The game is since been compared to Minecraft, and it's easy to see why. Game Zero's concept was truly ahead of its time, perhaps too far ahead. The destruction and recreation of the voxels used in the game as building blocks was too RAM-intensive for the GameCube, or even PCs to run it properly. Thus, after three years of work, Game Zero was quietly dropped. 
Another scrapped Nintendo-related title came from developer Camelot. The project was in the planning stages as an unnamed RPG in early 2001. Originally, Camelot said they would work on a GameCube RPG as soon as they finished Golden Sun on the GBA. This led to years of rumors that a Golden Sun title would be made for the GameCube. Then, in 2005, a Camelot Help Wanted ad appeared in Famitsu Magazine, reading, Now seeking staff for development of an RPG targeting a next-generation system, leading some to believe the project was moved to the Wii. However, nothing ever seemed to come of it. Nintendo also struck a few deals with prominent third-party developers. The Capcom 5 were five GameCube exclusives meant to be developed and published by Capcom to show off the system's friendliness to third-party platforms. Dead Phoenix, ironically, is the only one that didn't make it. It was first revealed in November 2002, but was removed from Capcom's website after failing to appear at E3 2003. Despite this, rumors of its eventual release were common. IGN even hypothesized it was being remade into a Kid Icarus game, but Capcom has historically refused to comment on the possibility of reviving Dead Phoenix. Seeming to confirm its abandonment, the trademark for the game's name was listed as abandoned at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in 2004. This wasn't the only high-profile third-party game to be scrapped. Sega and Overworks were confirmed to be planning a sequel to Skies of Arcadia in June 2001, shortly after the original game was released. Sadly, the original Dreamcast game sold extremely poorly. Worried that the game would be a write-off, Sega tried to make PS2 and GameCube ports to make back some money. The GameCube port came out in 2002 and unfortunately also sold poorly. The PS2 port was ultimately dropped. Then in 2003, Overworks were absorbed into Sega WoW. A year later, the team was split even further by a company restructuring, scattering the Arcadia developers into different teams. A ray of hope came in March 2004 when it was acknowledged a Skies of Arcadia sequel was being planned. Then, the those hopes were crushed, as in late 2004, Arcadia's producer told German Maniac magazine the sequel was on hold. Nothing on Skies of Arcadia 2 has been announced to date. Another prominent developer, From Software, was also planning an RPG for the GameCube. Gold Star Mountain was a game about capturing, training, and battling monsters. The game's world design was reportedly inspired by Disneyland's various attractions. It was planned to be released in 2002 as a GameCube exclusive. Despite substantial work being done on the game, it was cancelled without explanation. There were many more games that were sad to say never came to fruition. Developed and planned to be published by Midway Games, Crank the Weasel was first revealed at E3 in May 2002. It appeared to be inspired by 1930s American cartoons, with an adult comedic edge in the vein of Conker's Bad Fur Day. Crank would steal things from people and trade them in at pawn shops for cash. He could turn gangs against one another as well, with the ultimate goal of taking over the entire city himself. Humorously, Crank could also rapidly bite and infect a character, which would unleash a frenzied chain reaction of animal biting across the entire level, all set to the tune of Benny Hill's famous theme. The game was intended to be released on GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. While it was cancelled in 2003, a prototype demo in its developer environment was leaked in 2017. Another studio with a cancelled GameCube offering is Acclaim Entertainment. Acclaim began work on a sequel to Turok Evolution sometime after the game's release in 2002. However, the project never truly got off the ground, with only small bits of concept art left to prove it ever existed. Acclaim went bankrupt in 2005, and with it vanished any chance of a direct sequel to Turok Evolution. The series didn't surface again until Propaganda Games released Turok in 2008 for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. iNinja 2, a sequel to the original iNinja action game, once entered development for the GameCube at Argonaut Games. It would have taken place in the same setting as the original game, one that mixed ancient Japan with futuristic robots. While Argonaut Games worked on the game for a few months, sadly, financial issues forced the studio to close down in 2004. The game was never officially announced, with only concept art finding its way to the public. In 2005, TKO Software were working on a sequel as well. A successor to the Miss Pac-Man game, Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness was in the works. Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness 2 was originally planned to release on PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. The project was cancelled, however, apparently because the market was perceived to be too saturated. A game that also faced marketing issues was Worms Battle Rally. This was a racing game featuring Worms characters and weapons from the main series. It was developed by Team 17 and planned to release on GameCube, PS2, and PC. The game was cancelled in 2003 
despite being nearly finished, as the game's publisher wasn't happy with it. Team 17 instead developed Worms Forts Under Siege at that publisher's request. Upon completion of Worms Fort Under Siege, the publisher promptly cancelled that as well. Thankfully, Sega later picked up the rights for Under Siege and released it to the world. Some scrapped games had less of a pedigree. Developed by Warthog and announced in July 2004, Milo and the Rainbow Nasties went through a whirlwind before its cancellation. It was a cartoonish, colorful game with a plot similar to Super Mario Sunshine. The player would assume the role of Milo, who with his pet chameleon had to bring color back to a world whose color was eaten away by bugs. Originally developed for the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, Milo and the Rainbow Nasties eventually became a Gizmodo exclusive. In 2006, the owners of Warthog, Tiger Telematics, went bankrupt, and the game was cancelled. There's one way to ensure your game has the funding to make it to market, and that's to create a licensed game. Still, licensed games tend to come with their own issues. Metallica Damage Inc. was a licensed Metallica game announced in June 2003, being developed by Climax Studios. Rather than a music or rhythm-based game, Damage Inc. would have been a car combat game. Players could customize and swap out their vehicles, and could even hijack and steal other cars. As part of the deal, Metallica planned to release a song exclusively for the game. Allegedly, due to licensing issues, publisher Vivendi Games was looking for a reason to cancel the project. In 2016, P2P Online released footage of the game that had never before been seen, giving us all a taste of what could have been. Speaking of leaked footage, video of a never-officially-announced South Park game surfaced in August of 2014 after being discovered on Xbox development kits. It was originally intended to be the first game to officially map out the entire town of South Park, and would have released on the GameCube and PS2 as well as the Xbox. All four main characters would have been playable, with certain side characters also planned to make an appearance. The gameplay featured missions inspired by the show, such as Cartman attempting to sneak into a Special Olympics game. One of the higher-ups working on the game was said to be unprofessional, and is a possible reason the project didn't end up finishing with Ubisoft, as this person was later fired. LEGO Technics Bionicle, also known known as LEGO Bionicle, The Legend of Mata Nui, was a near-finished licensed game that wound up being canned at the last minute. It was first revealed in January 2001, with a PC version planned for the same year and a GameCube version in spring 2002. The GameCube release was the first to go, with the project being cancelled in its entirety shortly after. However, what was meant to be a GBA companion game, LEGO Bionicle Quest for the Toa, did successfully release in 2001. As far as gameplay goes, Legend of Mata Nui would have had a similar structure to the Legend of Zelda games, with unlockable items granting access to previously restricted areas. The official reason for the game's cancellation has never been confirmed. One developer was told LEGO felt the game was of poor quality. Others said there was a shift in LEGO's management. Still, some think the game was cancelled so LEGO could pursue Argonaut Games' pitch for the franchise, a pitch that led to 2003's Bionicle the game. Recently, in February and April 2018, two builds of Legend of Mata Nui were leaked online. Fans have since attempted to use these builds to recreate the game as accurately as possible. This isn't the only canned LEGO game for the system. Though never officially announced, LEGO Racers 4 would have followed what developers considered the third LEGO Racers game, Drome Racers. Programmer at attention to detail, Simon Goodwin, said the game was cancelled after substantial development effort, and would have been more ambitious than Drome Racers. The entire game world would have been streamed from the DVD, allowing for a much larger play area than earlier LEGO titles, and most console games at the time. Meanwhile, Bulletproof Monk was a game that, like the film, was based on Flypaper Press's comic book series of the same name. It was revealed in September 2002 to be published by Empire Interactive sometime around Christmas 2003 for consoles and PC. The game never made it to market, though, as its developer, Mucky Foot, closed down before its release. Based on the Tremors movie series, Tremors the video game was announced in August 2002. Strangely, no images or videos of the game were shown when it was announced despite the game being in development for the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. Set in Perfection Nevada a few years after the first Tremors movie, players would take on the role of Burt Gummer, a survivalist featured throughout the franchise. The game was scheduled for release in Fall 2003, but was quietly cancelled beforehand, likely due to its developers, Rock Solid Studios, going bankrupt. It's not all sad, though. Rock Solid Studios was later reborn as Avalanche Studios, creators of Just Cause. Another scrapped GameCube game based on a film came from the 
E.T. franchise. Despite E.T.'s terrible history with video games, a few developers wanted to give the alien another shot. E.T. the Extraterrestrial, The Search for Dragora was a bizarre concept of a game. In it, a meteor crashes onto E.T.'s home planet, destroying its life-giving Dragora plants. E.T. and friends would search for seeds and attempt to cross-pollinate plants in order to recreate the elusive Dragora plant. A similar but different game was also planned for PS2 called E.T. the Extraterrestrial Return to the Green Planet. Unfortunately, developer Z2 was absorbed by Warthog Games in 2002. Meanwhile, publisher New Kid Co. went out of business in 2005. Collectively, these events put an end to this bizarre game's chances of release. Some of you may know BattleBots as an American TV show where remote-controlled robots compete in a robot combat tournament. Others might know it as a real-life company that also hosts robot competitions. Well, in 2002, a 3D game based on the show was in development for the GameCube and PlayStation 2. It was, funnily enough, also going to feature customizable robots fighting. While the 3D version of the game was cancelled, a 2D BattleBots game was ultimately released in 2003 by Majesco for the Game Boy Advance. Another TV-licensed game for the system was scrapped. Galador, Defenders of the Outer Dimension, was a platformer announced in May 2002 at E3. A PS2 version of the game was also planned, along with a 2D side-scroller for the GBA with the same concept. Players would take on the role of Nick Bluetooth, the hero of the Outer Dimension. He'd fight his way through four unique realms to rescue his friends from the evil tyrant Gorm. Of the games being developed, only the GBA game was actually released. Due to financial instability, the remaining Galador versions were cancelled, and the team making the game were laid off. Games based on cartoons seemed to be popular during this time. Rocket Power Zero Gravity Zone would have been a spiritual successor to the skateboarding game Rocket Power Beach Bandit. It was in development during 2002 to 2003 for GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, but was never released. Then, in September 2009, Andrew Borman of P2P Online won an auction for an early alpha build of the game. He documented much of the build on his YouTube channel, preserving the developers' work on the game for history. In 2000, BAM Entertainment partnered with Cartoon Network to release games based on yet another cartoon license, The Powerpuff Girls. The Powerpuff Girls Shock of Ages was the last Powerpuff game to be announced by BAM, but it was never released. It's confirmed to have been in development during 2003. However, the last game BAM ever developed for Cartoon Network was Samurai Jack The Amulet of Time, released in 2003. Some believe Shock of Ages was cancelled due to licensing issues, or because the relationship between BAM and Cartoon Network went sour. It's also possible financial issues were to blame, as both BAM and the game's developer, Sonari Interactive, haven't made a game since 2005. In 2018, a former developer shared details about G.I. Joe Operation Ultra, a previously unknown title. It was being made by Hasbro and Radical Entertainment of The Simpsons' Hit and Run and Crash of the Titans fame for GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. According to the developer, the game would have featured 16 missions that broke down into four acts each. Based on the popular G.I. Joe toy line, it seems Hasbro got quite far in the design process for the game. Regardless, Radical Entertainment never fully started development. Another famous figurine or doll line also had a canned game on GameCube. Barbie Treasures in Time was a Barbie action-adventure game developed by Sierra and meant to be published by Vivendi Games. It was planned to release exclusively on GameCube in 2003. Players would have been able to join Barbie in her most exciting adventure ever, helping her travel through time, ancient towns, lagoons, shipwrecks, and forests to find lost treasures and unlock her way home. It also seemed to feature one of the more active versions of in-game Barbie, with her being able to flip, dive, and jump around obstacles. With a doll line just as popular, it's not surprising Bratz wanted to get in on that licensing money, perhaps a little too much. Bratz Formal Funk, alternatively known as Bratz Party Night, was in development in 2003. It was planned for the GameCube and PS2, but was never released due to what essentially amounts to a legal nightmare. In 2002, Ubisoft entered a licensing deal with MGA to publish Bratz video games. Not long after this, the popularity of the Bratz brand exploded. Now feeling unsatisfied with the deal, MGA tried to force a renegotiation of the license in 2003. When Ubisoft refused, MGA sued Ubisoft and took the license to other publishers. Ubisoft countersued, alleging MGA's termination of the license was invalid. The case was decided in Ubisoft's favor in 2008, and they were awarded $13.2 million for lost profits, damages, legal fees, and interest. As for formal funk, several of its ideas appear to have been reused in Bratz Rock Angels and Forever Diamonds. 
Make sure you tune into part 2 of Cancelled GameCube Games, where we talk more about Nintendo's first-party cancellations, as well as several interesting third-party games that were scrapped. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to Digino Gaming and give this video a like. Thanks for watching.